Hello there, and thank you for joining us for Tuesday Connect. Tuesday Connect is our weekly show here at Mandaka Hill Chapel YouTube channel, where we bring gospel perspectives on life's issues. And thank you for joining us to be part of this show. Two other episodes have gone before this. Please be sure to check them out, and also subscribe to our channel so that when every show comes out, you can actually get notifications and be up to speed with what's happening here at Mamlaka Hill Chapel. Today we're going to discuss a very hot topic. Well, they all are hot. Be sure to follow through even with the following episodes. But I'll not be doing this alone. I'm joined today by Pastor Gideon Kadu. Hello, Gideon Kadu there. Uh, this is our pastor for adults here at Mamlaka Hill Chapel. And on this other side, I'm joined by Pastor Ramson Chebosi, our pastor for adults, young adults over here, and our pastor for Robs as well. Today, we're going to discuss the issue, like I've said, the topic of social media activism. But let me begin by asking Pastor Ramson, in what ways have you experienced uh, activism on social media and interactions on social media? Yeah, I think uh, uh, one of the ways in which I've seen a lot of uh, activism on social media has been through the pages that are asking for petition. Yeah, I, I have I have several on my email, and that's that's uh, one of the experiences of social media activism I have. But there've also been I happen to follow a few pages or on social media that are you know straight up about social uh, justice, about you know governance and policy. Uh, I can see there are platforms where there are groups for discussion on such things. There are people who are trying to ensure that even just uh, people would know about civil rights and such. So I think uh, that has been my experience. Uh, YouTube channels uh, that are specific about empowering the people to understand who are the law. And yeah, that's as much I would say about social media activism and my experience of it. Yeah. Right. But I think we should start by asking ourselves what uh, social media activism is actually is. Because is it is social media activism that time when we make memes about uh, Jaden? Uh, that, does that include social media activism? So. Well, our viewers, you tell us on the comment <laughs> section. But let me ask Kadu, in what ways have you experienced the same thing? All right, so I'm going to go back to what I just said. I think we need first to define uh, what it is. Okay? And so if you're talking social media, we know what social media is. I think my simplest definition of social media is social media. <laughs> but then when we talk, when we talk activism, uh, two angles. I see advocacy on one side, I see protest on the other. Okay? And so in what ways have I encountered that? I mean, this is almost omnipresent. Uh, every single day people are either advocating for a political position or you know, there's, there's always something that people are advocating for on social media, in whatever camp they're in. And then there are also stuff that people are always protesting about. I mean, just recently, you saw people protesting about the cost of living and, you know, lower food prices. Uh, so, I mean, every single day, guys are uh, pushing uh, agenda on social media, and so it's all over the place. You bring in an interesting perspective. Uh, let me ask, now that you sort of tend to divide social media and activism, Let's try and zero in on, forget social media for a minute, and let's zero in on activism. For a Christian, is there an express command of the scriptures that would require every Christian to participate in social activism such that a lack of participation or a lackadaisy call or indifference in, to this end is actually a sinful stand that's such that a Christian who is not participating in social activism is actually living in sort of express disobedience of a biblical command, such as it's a sinful stand? Good question. Um, first, I think to be alive is to be an activist, even before we talk Christian, because there are things that will bother you as a human being. Uh, every single day we see things that we're not happy, happy about. We see things that we wish we could do differently or could be done differently. In that regard, we are activists. Even not, even, even Though we don't, uh, you know, voice it out, but deep inside that, uh, you know, that feeling of something should be done, you know, makes you an activist. But now, for the believer, I think there are outright commands in the Bible, and uh, let me just refer to a few uh, because my memory is failing me, so <laughs> I forget some of my, 
uh, verses. But now, one of the most popular ones that people actually know is Micah 6, 8. You know? He has told you, O man, what is good? What does, the Lord, what does the Lord require of you? But to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. Okay? So God actually requires us to uh, do justice, uh, basically try to correct uh, the inequalities and the wrong things about life. You know, to love kindness and promote it, and uh, to walk in humility. Um, Isaiah 117 says, you know, learn to do good, seek justice, correct oppression, bring justice to the fatherless, plead the widow's cause. Uh, Proverbs 31, you know, open your mouth for the mute, for the rights of all who are destitute. Uh, open your mouth, judge righteously, defend the rights of the poor. I mean, there are tons and tons of verses uh, where we are told to actually engage uh, in trying to bring about change in society, in life as a whole. Right. Um, let me ask you, uh, Pastor Ramson, you have in some instances mentioned or uh, alluded to the fact that it is um, not necessarily a call for every Christian or that there are, uh, is it that not every Christian should or that there are different approaches that Christians bring to the table mm -hmm. or when they're lending their voice to social media activism? Yeah. Uh, given the topic and uh, just justice and activism and the age that we live in, I think it would be important uh, to say I am for justice. You know, when you say, at your, you have sometimes alluded, not all, all of us, <laughs> uh, somebody would be watching and saying, hey, 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 this guy, I've always known, this guy is promoter not, <laughs> promoter of injustice. Uh, no, I, I think uh, what uh, Pastor Kadu has mentioned about, you know, there's a call on everyone to pursue justice. Uh, it's the same thing, I think, uh, we see God condemning uh, the guys uh, through prophet Isaiah when he tells them about their fasting and all that they do. And then he tells them, you know, you, know, you guys, all these things that you do, but in terms of justice, in terms of the people who uh, work for you, uh, in gems, you'd see you know, partiality and all that. So as far as justice and advocating for such things, uh, I think everyone should do it. How you do it is what I think is different. Uh, so I don't think everyone is meant to create a Twitter page and a, a social media, uh, you know, uh, turn their, you know, their WhatsApp status into, uh, you know, pro or against the government policies and trying to, you know, articulate every, every bill that's coming to the floor of parliament. I don't think that's how everybody should engage. I think. Uh, depending just in the same way that we usually look at Christians and their giftings and knowing how they deploy it. Uh, we might, we are all called to evangelize, but we deploy that gift and that call differently, depending on our, on our gifts. Uh, so I'd say everyone is called to, you know, pursue justice. Everyone is called to pursue righteousness. And in that way, it will include the many other things, ensuring there is, you know, pay, People are paid well, uh, and they are paid according to the work that they have done, uh, you know, in the office or, you know, everywhere. As, you know, as Kadu has said, you know, to be alive is to be an activist. Uh, trust only Kadu would say that. But, you know, all, all those things. So I think the ways in which you engage should be different. So I don't think there should be a call on everyone to ensure that you post on every topic. You know, everything that, you know, it comes up about, for example, some, one that might be quite controversial might be, you know, there is war in a certain place in the world and everyone is talking about it and then, you know, everybody is changing the, their status to have the flags of that country, you know. And so it shouldn't be an expectation that, you know, hey, somebody is wondering, hey, now I'm a pastor uh, or now who you my, my, I'm a, my friend or my fellow believers are not putting anything out there about this specific thing, and therefore they are not, uh, you know, they're not concerned about justice and, you know, activism and calling for, you know, right living in society. So that's the one I would actually say, I think that should not be the case. It's not an expectation on everyone to do everything about every topic, because only, only God can do that. Uh, no human being can do that. Oh. But isn't silence in these matters a form of 
complicity or an approval of it such that it, I can evidently see injustice happening wherever or whatever is happening maybe in terms of economics or um, in terms of environmental matters and stuff like that. Um, and my, my absence of adding my voice perhaps could be that I actually, it means that I don't care or yeah. If you do that, you'd have to accuse the Holy Spirit and his inspiration of scripture of you know, having uh, not talked about so many ills that were present in society um, uh, all through history. There have been various ills. I think well, it's sometimes so tough to read through history and hear some of the things that have happened in history and just even the time of the writing of the Bible. Uh, you know, Jesus himself does not directly address himself to the Romans trying to ensure that this uh, occupation of Israel is stopped. It, you, you'd see it as an injustice, you know. You guys have taken up this place and you are ta taxing them and there is this conflict. He doesn't directly address himself to, uh, to that, but there are various ways. Uh, there are things, I think, in priority. You need to prioritize. You need to ask yourself, you know, what's, what's the biggest thing about justice? In, what are some of the things that will bring about justice in this world? And one of them is, you know, God himself will bring justice at some point. And so there is a place I think all of us should, as Christians, be praying for justice. Uh, you know, when we talk about, you know, your kingdom come, they will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We are talking about a space where, you know, if God's will is actually being done on earth, then that's a place of, you know, there is justice in this world. So I'd say uh, there is that space of everyone should be having a desire for justice. Uh, you, if you are not concerned at all about justice, when you, you, know, when you see somebody, uh, the poor being trodden down upon, or you see somebody mishandling uh, their worker, and you feel nothing, I'd say, hey, you need to check yourself. So if you care nothing about these things, hey, there is something you need to watch out. But in terms of silence and sometimes not being able to speak out, I think it's an, uh, there are times when you are in power that you have a position of influence and you should say something because, you know, God is, would actually say, you know, you've been entrusted with that. You have the capacity to handle that. Uh, for example, you know, if I work in a place as, and I see, I am maybe in HR, or, and then I see uh, somebody else uh, mistreating an intern. And I do nothing about it out of, you know, I'm just being silent, I'm minding my own business. Then I'd say I think there is a higher accountability on you to whom much is given, much is expected. So the more influence that you have, I think you should speak about some things. But even the greatest or powerful men in the world, maybe you'd talk about a president in the United States. If you are into Nini, I think last time we were talking about conspiracy theories. So if you are into conspiracy theories, maybe you might be thinking about cabals and such guys. So if there is a Christian and they wield all, you know, that kind of an influence, they as an individual can't address each and every ill on this world. So to expect that there is a human being who can handle all ills and speak into all of them because sometimes even you don't have the enough facts about what you need to speak. You know, sometimes you'd see people saying, hey, you are being underpaid or pay interns and do all that. But sometimes you do not have all the details about how you in ended up in that space. So if you are calling on me, a human being, to do all that, you're asking me to research about all topics of injustice. So I think it's, a, I think it's an unreasonable expectation to say that on all issues, if somebody is, always, is silent on some of them, they are actually supporting that. But I'd encourage somebody to... Just to weigh in. Uh, just to weigh in. Um, it's, it's a yes and a no. There are times when we outrightly must speak out what is talked about. But then there are times when silence is actually uh, a form of uh, activism. Look, if I see a piece of bottle lying on the road, Okay, I can decide to take a photo, post it on Twitter, and blame the Minister for Environment. Okay, or I can just silently pick up that bottle and put it in the trash. You know, I have played my part. 
in making society a better place. If I see uh, someone, a kid, uh, you know, who is hungry, standing by the roadside, I can take a video of that kid uh, and make a big deal and make noise about it, about how government has uh, abandoned people. Or I could simply tell that kid, walk with me and go buy that kid a meal. Uh, my silence there, it is, it, whatever, is activism, you know. So I don't think everything requires noise. There are times when we need to be silent and just deal with what we can handle. God has given us gifts. Uh, yeah, you know, that, 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 the case of James, a guy comes to you, he's hungry. And it, you have tombs, you're telling him, I'll pray for you. Uh, may the Lord fill you. Let's take a photo so that we can talk yes. about it. Talk also. about your hunger, how the government has <laughs> failed you, how you are MPs, this and that. Hashtag. Hashtag, you know, hunger, hunger games. Yeah, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but then, what you do, man, is take this guy to a restaurant and buy him a meal. I mean, you have the money in your pocket, uh, after all. And God is basically bringing you to that situation so God can use you as the agent to bring about uh, change and transformation. But then when you mention that, mm. I think it brings out an aspect, maybe, of social media activism that sometimes we might miss, is that sometimes in our fiery, you know, tweets and fiery updates and all that, we forget what we could be doing. We forget the responsibility that is on us because we are casting our, all of us, all our eyes are now on, you know, a certain somebody or when we are talking about, you know, this minister or that, or this organization and this, we forget our place in sorting out things sometimes. Someone could argue mm -hmm. that uh, my posting this, my publishing this, is giving, is teaching people to fish instead of giving them fish. Because my sorting out this mess and just picking the bottle, I, 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 am, I am denying the greater society an opportunity to learn mm -hmm. about what taking care of the environment would look like and the dangers of throwing litter. So that this person is, you're seeing a greater responsibility to the greater community. Instead of picking trash after people, or well, for example, dealing with this one need, and there could be many other needs that, in the society that more people could be aware of and be involved in. What do you think of that? But you see, if I saw you trashing, it would be my responsibility to tell you, hey, stop littering. Pick up that bottle and sort of just police you. But hey, I, you're just walking randomly and you find a bottle. You have no idea who threw it there. <laughs> I mean, are you going to post Set up who, CCTV who in 40 million Kenyans <laughs> threw this bottle here? Let, let's deal with it, you understand? Uh, so, I mean, the things that we just need to deal with uh, simply and move on. All right, be it as it may, let me, let me, let me go back to you, Kadu. Kadu, you're a pastor, you're a preacher, you're called to proclaim the gospel, this is what you do, this is what you think about every other day. Let, tell me, in what ways has social media activism helped the cause of the gospel? Has yes, I mean, you see, um, I could correlate activism uh, to prophecy. People don't get it, but activism is, is, is actually prophecy, if done right. Because you are trying to stir people towards a certain direction. You are trying to bring about change, a certain end. I don't think people just make noise for the sake of making noise. Well, some do. <laughs> to get, uh, you know. But so just like the Old Testament prophet, you know, when they gave a prophecy, it was to activate people to repentance. It wasn't just to scare people. It wasn't just to complain about uh, the state of affairs, status quo. It was to move people to turn towards God or deal with whatever needed to be dealt with. So activism in that regard helps us as preachers that even as we share the gospel of Jesus Christ, okay, uh, people also play their part in just trying to bring about uh, and talk about what needs to be done on the ground. Because I, wh when I preach, you know, my application is, you know, of the truth that I've, I've preached is basically go and change society, you know, go and become a better person, go and share the love of Christ. Uh, when someone else opposed that, in, even in the name of whoever, I mean, it sort of helps, okay? But I don't think we've linked it directly. I don't think we've thought about the connection. I don't think we've actually held meetings where we're saying, look, I'm going to do a sermon. I need you guys on the ground to push. 
uh, my sermon application. Okay? Uh, so okay. if I talk about purity, I need you guys to go and, uh, you know, talk about impurity and talk about all these things on the ground. No. But when you look at, because uh, I say God, God doesn't just use preachers. God uses whoever he chooses to use. I mean, God used a donkey as an activist in the, in the Bible. God could use anyone. Uh, wisdom comes from all sources. Uh, and so in that regard, I think there is a connection. Has it enhanced or has it made a difference in what I do as a minister of the gospel? It would be hard to quantify uh, because ultimately even what I do, the results are with God. Yeah. But there is, a, there is a way in which I think you can link them as a benefit. Is Sometimes I think... Uh, and as you, as you respond, uh -huh. could you maybe think of ways in which our viewers, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of how this helps the greater community of faith, how it helps the advancement of the gospel in the greater life of the community of the church as well. Okay, actually my response I think would address, uh, address that, but I was just thinking of what uh, Kadu was saying and I was thinking, you know, if you call our typical, you know, activist prophet, and I was just thinking of prophet, you know, our, our most... Uh, no, I said... <laughs> I didn't say they are prophets. <laughs> well, well, well. Oh, yeah, yeah, I was ready to just start a, you know, prophetic ministry. About, uh, I was about to approach one of our most famous, Okia Mtata. And it was Prophet Okia Mtata. And we would have had a church already full. But I'd say in terms, one, I think one of the ways uh, social media activism would be of benefit to the gospel is this. I think when those topics that come up asking for you know, justice, and asking and calling out and saying, hey, there's this thing that is going on that is wrong here. I find that those moments usually cause people to, you know, emotions. People's emotions become raw. I usually find whenever you approach somebody and talk about, hey, you know, this Christianity thing, Nini, uh, where it, they speak sometimes, people speak out of a sense of, they would give up some things, or if you told them, is it right for somebody to do this, 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 and then end up in heaven if there is no consequence to your actions on this earth? And somebody is like, ah, yeah, it's okay. But the same person, when they are talking about corruption or some allocation of resources have been done wrong, is not so casual about it. It's not so, uh, you know, ah, it's okay. So I find uh, such opportunities helpful for as a believer when I'm talking to somebody and tell them, hey, uh, and I found this helpful sometimes when I, 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 you go and you're talking to a guy on a border border or you're talking to a guy on a, an Uber driver, uh, you know, people usually ask sometimes, how can you evangelize? And for me, one of the ways I found is through those, you know, pick out those topics that are hot topics in the society currently. And for me, I just try to find a string from where it is, from that topic to the gospel to how does this... And do the, like you just tell them, he's a rekali. <laughs> and then, and then <laughs> I, had, I saw somebody say, post on their status that today, uh, I had the, you know, my Ndudi guy was telling me a story, and then I, I told him, I can't hear you. And uh, he felt that was the most courageous thing you could ever tell that guy, because, you know, you just let them go on. <laughs> But I think that whenever somebody talks about, you know, governance, something is not going right, I think it's an opportunity to show them that this thing you are really, really striving for, here on earth, you can pursue it and try and achieve it, but it will never be fully achieved. There is a place that I think you can be pointed to. And when you see how God intends to fulfill, and, you know, you're talking about governance. Uh, let me help you see that this issue of always talking about a leader who's great and who cares about us will only be fulfilled in Jesus Christ when he comes. And yes, we, we should continue. And I think the best activists are those who have already realized that. So that even in their pursuits of the current justice and everything, they are tempered. You know, last week, I think the video was about, you know, how people sometimes uh, in council culture you tend to overdo something. Uh, and, you know, you ask for justice that is not fully justice. It is more than, it's harsher than it should be. 
And I think now when you have Christians or people who have already experienced this God, who has done, who will, you know, renew all things, then even in your activism, you are able to do it right. So, but I think, yeah, so I think one of the ways in which it supports the gospel is creating spaces for us to bring in and share, hey, here is how the gospel will sort out this thing that our hearts ache for a lot. So, yeah, I think that's one way that I think would benefit Christian community because um, sometimes we even talk about how people are being told, you know, don't evangelize somebody. But, for example, if I go to work, and somebody asks me, "Is yes, and all these leaders, you know, you know, how should we vote? You know, you know, that is actually an opening. You've given me an opportunity to actually express my way of thinking. And if I can use the gospel, you can't accuse me of trying to evangelize you, evangelize you. If I just share with you, hey, here is how I'm thinking about it, and it has a line to the gospel. So yeah." Mm. Guys, our time, can you imagine, is almost spent. Uh -huh. I'd like to hear your last thoughts on this matter. But let's... Have we actually talked? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I thought that was the intro. Of, uh, I, mean, I you thought know, you were laying the ground for... I know, I know. Yeah, what happens Maybe to my put a notes? You know, I, I had some notes. <laughs> you had a book. Yeah, yeah, you had, had a book. book. On... <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. for author it right now. But as we sort of begin to learn this plan, mm -hmm. let me just hear from you what frameworks are there to help a Christian engage in social media activism if they have to? Well, first, I think as believers, uh, you know, Paul says we are in Christ. Okay? So that's where basically, that's, that's where we dwell, in Christ. Our worldview then uh, is uh, shaped by our standing in Christ. We derive our perspective from the Bible, okay? And you know, the Bible talks about Jesus going places and having compassion on the masses. And if you're being renewed in the image of Christ, then we should be able to see the things that bother Christ, uh, things that ordinarily would bother Jesus, uh, those would bother us. And so I think our activism, uh, first of all, should, 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 should be informed by who we are as believers. So we are not just people who make noise, for the sake of noise. We're making noise because, you know, <laughs> different contexts, uh, you know? Yeah, but even if you're making, uh, well, activism is, is never, jo it's never joyful. joyful noise. <laughs> it's always bitter noise, <laughs> you know? Especially uh, when the police car pulls up. <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> you know? And so when we talk about the issues in society, we're talking about them because we know they not only affect us, but they affect the very cause of Christ, and they break God's heart. Uh, that's why, as a believer, we should grieve over injustice. We should grieve over, uh, you know, the widow and the orphan and the alien, uh, you know, and all these kids are roaming around without homes. Those are things that should break our hearts. And so those are things that we should talk about. But even as we talk about those things, what are we ourselves doing uh, to try help? Because it's one thing to go to Facebook and... Uh, Twitter and make all that noise, but then you are doing absolutely nothing. So as I think for believers, God has called us to bring about change. God has called us to make society a better place, and he's given us gifts. So let's, let's, let's uh, make noise about what we are not able to do ourselves, but what we can do, I mean, let's, let's play our part. Let's play our part. Uh, I think the world would be a more peaceful place if everyone Played a little part, you know. Uh, the tons of things I don't believe we should even blame the government for, you know. Uh, yes, the government has a role, but there are things that we, as ordinary citizens, can come together and fix. If there is one pothole in South Sea, you know, uh, and people pass there every single day, there's there's traffic, people are getting uh, tire busts, and people are complaining. All it takes is one bag of cement, 400 shillings, for that bottle to be fixed. You know, um, as to whether you need uh, permits and licenses, I don't know about that. But again, if you get arrested for fixing a pothole, that is what Jesus calls suffering for the cause of <laughs> how the gospel. But anyway, so I think we should just play our part, even as we make noise. We are so good at uh, making noise 
forgetting that God also calls us to play a part in making society a better place. Any thoughts, Pastor Ramson? Uh, the, the thought that is ringing in my mind uh, before I share it, I'd like to say, you know, maybe you fix the pothole and say, this pothole was fixed by... Uh, <laughs> Don't put your name there. <laughs> <laughs> you know? This pothole was fixed by... Yeah. Nobody will touch it. Uh, I think uh, when we're thinking about uh, believers, now, the thought has already escaped my mind. Please ask the question again. <laughs> what framework mm -hmm. should guide Christians in their participation in social in media gospel. activism? Yes, so it's actually something close to what Kadu said. I think as you are uh, guided by the fact that you are a believer first, and that informs everything that you do. So I would say participate in all the opportunities that you get, as time would allow, as your gifts would allow. Uh, but do not forget, yes, your place, your responsibility to do something about it. They, you shouldn't be complaining about the poor in society while you are underpaying somebody who offers a service to you. Uh, you shouldn't be complaining about how, you know, leadership is not doing something, you know, the political and everything, while at your workplace, the authority that God has granted to you, you aren't using it to ensure that the right thing is being done in your office. You are calling the president to make a sacrifice, while you yourself are not willing to hold yourself to the same uh, level of accountability. So I'd say, first of all, do that. And the one I'd say, you know, especially in our context as Kenyans, is do not let your emotions uh, overtake your reasoning mm -hmm. about things. So when you get into a space and you are making the advocacy, whether it's in social media or in, you know, in your workplace, there is a topic about something and you are contributing, do not let your emotions overrun you in this way. Uh, so you start, you know, you, it's very easy. It started out as a topic on this, on, you know, poverty and that, and ends up in name calling. So I think that's how sometimes a believer would lose. And I, uh, and I think if we bring the light of the gospel and the light of Christianity and, you know, uh, Christian character, into the discussions around activism and how we do it in our small spaces and in the large spaces, I think we will make a greater impact than if we just engage by it uh, in it through the means of trying forcefully or you know the biggest debate, but also bringing our Christian character into the various spaces where we will engage in the activism, in the advocacy or in the protest so that I should never in my advocacy end up calling the president and, uh, you know, in a way or addressing him in a way that is not right, that goes against the call to me as a Christian to honor the leaders or all such manner of engagements. I think we will be a better nation and we will make much progress if we bring our Christian thought and character to our advocacy. All right. Can you believe that? We have come to the end of Tuesday Connect for today. Thank you, Pastor Ramson. Thank you, Pastor Kadu, for joining us today. And thank you, our viewers, for being part of this conversation. Be sure to add your comments in the comment section so that we know what you're thinking about these things, uh, how you're planning to respond to what we'll be talking about today. And also, check out the previous conversations that have happened on this channel. This is season 4 and 3 and 2 and 1 as well. And also subscribe to our YouTube page so that you can be up to speed with every show that's coming up. I promise you, there are so many great things that are coming up for you. And be sure we want you to be part of this. But now, that's, I guess, all we had time for today. And you want to say goodbye to all of you? Goodbye. See you guys next week.